In this video we're gonna take some beautiful macro photos. I'm gonna take these photos. Of course I don't know that yet but these are the ones you're gonna follow me while I take in this video. And I'm also gonna give you my main reasons why I love macro photography. Why it is the genre of photography that I love a lot more than all the other genres. So, reason number one I love macro photography is that you can go out in the middle of the day in the harshest sunlight and you will still be able to get very nice beautiful photos. In other genres of photography like landscape or street or portraits you always have to go out in the golden hour to get the best results. And the golden hour can be pretty short and it's very inconvenient to have to photograph on just a very short time span each day. It is so nice to be able to go out whenever in any weather and still be able to take nice photos. And you can do this in macro photography. Another prime location for finding insects to photograph uh, are these bushes here. Uh, in Swedish it's called Vinbär. I'm not sure about the English word for these berries that grow here uh, but these bushes seem to be very popular among insects. Let's see what we can find. Here we have a stink bug. They usually like to hang out on these bushes and uh, I like photographing them so let's try. very beautiful specimen. Uh, I tried to make a stack. can be a bit tricky. Sometimes it is possible to tie it together and make a nice photo. Sometimes it's not. But uh, when possible, when the insect is sitting still, I always try. It doesn't hurt. Here we have one of these uh, nice orange-red little bugs. They are very common around here this time of the year. Let's try to capture it. I think for many shield bugs or whatever you call this it works best to shoot them straight from above because you want to get as much of the shield, uh, the shell, as possible. That usually makes for a nice photo. So let's try that. The second reason I love macro photography is that you can do it pretty much anywhere. You don't have to travel. You save so much time and money by not having to travel every time you want to take a nice looking photograph. For example, a place like this, just a regular garden with some flowers, is a perfect place, at least in the summer, to do macro photography because you will find so many insects and if you want to become really good at photography, you need to practice a lot. You need to go out almost every day, I think, to become any good. And you need to do that over a period of many years, maybe 10 years or so, before you are actually a really good photographer. And it is so convenient to just go out wherever you live and, and be just a few hundred meters from your home because then you can actually do it every day. Even if you have small kids like me, there will always be time to take many photo walks. So you get a lot of practice and then you will be able to perfect your craft and take many photos that look good. So I just passed this window on the outside and I saw that there were some insects here on the inside. So I went in 
And actually there is a cuckoo wasp here, which looks kind of tired because he has tried to fly out and uh, not succeeded. So I'm gonna help him out, but first I'm gonna take a few photos. Cuckoo wasps, they are so beautiful, but often they are very skittish. So uh, yeah, I'm always happy to get a chance to photograph one. And now I'm gonna help him out. <laughs> I find that focus magnification, uh, which means that the image becomes zoomed in at a point, so you can really see in detail if it is sharp or not, that works very well in macro photography. Focus peaking kind of works, but I find that focus peaking is never as exact as focus magnification. With focus magnification, I can always be sure that when I press the shutter, I will get a sharp photo. So uh, I tend to use that uh, a lot when trying to take sharp photos in macro photography. And these are the two button bindings that I always have on my camera for macro photography. One button, this one for focus magnification, which will zoom in the picture so I can see if it is sharp or not. And also I have this button here uh, on the back for turning on and off uh, focus peaking. And these two features is very important to have handy in macro photography. And uh, those are the two main ways I get the focus right. So let's go somewhere else. I think we have some kind of leaf hopper or similar insects here. I'll try to capture it. He just moves to the underside of the stem all the time. And there he hopped away. Didn't really manage to get a particularly good photo of him, but that's how it is sometimes, or even pretty often. Reason number three I love macro photography is that I get so many photos per hour spent working uh, that I like the look of. For example, if I spend say an afternoon doing uh, landscape photography, I usually get zero, sometimes one photo that I'm really happy with. So I spend a lot of time and work and I usually don't get that much. And that is uh, something that very easily kills your inspiration and motivation to do photography, right? You, you do a lot of hard work and you get almost no results. In portrait photography, I'm a bit more lucky. Uh, if I spend an afternoon taking portraits, I usually get at least a couple that I really love, that I'm happy with. So that I find more fun than landscape. And then we have macro photography. For whatever reason, when I spend an afternoon doing macro photography, I very often end up with like 10 photos I really love the look of. And when you get so many nice results per hour spent, it makes it that much more fun, right? Um, low effort, high results, that makes it fun. And I find that this is how it is with macro photography. And I'm not sure if it is that I have some talent for it or if it's just that I love the look of macro photos of insects or whatever it is. But for me, this is a very important factor and one that I think is one of the core reasons I love macro photography. Let's see if we can find any insects on these beautiful yellow wildflowers here. See a small insect here on the yellow flower uh, let's try to capture it
beautiful yellow crab spider perfectly matches the color of the flower it is sitting on now we got a bit um, intimidated because I'm approaching here with the camera crab spiders are usually a bit uh, shy they uh, tend to walk towards the underside of whatever uh, flower they are sitting on when you approach so usually you have to be a bit patient to be able to capture them now he's walking here on the underside of the stem And here I run into one of the main limitations of the Pope shield that uh, the shield is protruding so much and that you have this underside here that also sticks out uh, which makes it very hard for me to approach the crab spider directly from the side like this. With a more narrow solution if we would remove this part here uh, it would have been a lot easier and of course if I would have had a more narrow lens as well that is why i'm considering maybe getting the lawa 85 millimeter um, but i'm still thinking if i should get the 85 millimeter or the 90 millimeter I see something peculiar here. <laughs> Let's try to capture it. Papa, hey. Yeah. hey! Papa, they bring red look of the time. You bring this one. That's another example of this Pope shield getting in the way. Uh, I saw an interesting insect, but it was sitting in a way, so it was impossible to focus on it close enough because the Pope shield is in the way. So ideally I want a diffuser that kind of looks like this and works like this, but that is softer so you can push it against things. Uh, maybe I should try to use one of the other Pope shield shields that I got with the kit. Okay, I think it's time to go look for some jumping spiders. I haven't photographed any this year and I kind of feel uh, a bit of an urge. And what I will do is I will um, pluck something that they can... Uh, that I can first aid them to sit on. Maybe this thing. Uh, because then um, it's easier to photograph them from a nice angle. Because mm, the place over here where I find them most of the time is a wooden wall and they're usually just sitting on that wall and it's very hard to get them from the side so you can look into their eyes that is the best angle to photograph jumping spiders uh, but when they're sitting on a flat surface that's very hard especially now with the Pope shield that is so uh, stiff but on this wall I usually find lots of jumping spiders for some reason they love sitting here so let's look around yes here we have one up there and uh, let's see if we can find another one yes here is another one now it's running away <laughs> yeah so basically there are always several jumping spiders here on this wall so I'm gonna try to um, hold this close to one and see if it will jump on it and then I can try to photograph it. And since this is pretty tricky I obviously make sure that I have all the settings as I want them on the camera beforehand. I have the right magnification which in this case is two times and so on. So that I don't miss the shot when I have the chance to take it.
Okay, so I realized that they, for whatever reason, don't like this. I guess they, maybe they don't like the smell of it. <laughs> so I'm gonna try with these leaves and see if that works better. Let's see. So, uh, I had some trouble with the jumping spiders. They very quickly realized my plan uh, that I was trying to get them to jump on a leaf. So they just hid all of them. They just went behind the planks and didn't show up again. Uh, but something unexpected happened because when I was looking for the jumping spiders here, I noticed uh, a very interesting insect sitting here. Uh, one that uh, I've seen sometimes, uh, I don't know the name of it, maybe I will add the name here, if I can find it, otherwise please tell me in the comments. And very unexpectedly I got some very beautiful shots of this very beautiful and interesting insect. And this brings me to my fourth point about why I love macro photography. And that is that you can never ever uh, know what kind of photos you're gonna get when you go out. It is always a complete surprise. You always find what you're not expecting to find. And that is part of the thrill, I think, with macro photography. For example, if you are a landscape shooter and you go to maybe the, some famous spot in Italy, the, the Cinque Terre, the, or however you pronounce that, the five villages, and you try to take a shot of Monte Rosa, or whatever it's called, you can pretty much know exactly what to expect because you have seen hundreds of photos of that place and yeah, it, it can only look in so many different ways. You know what to expect. Uh, but when you go out to do macro photography, uh, you always get surprised in different ways and you pretty much always come home with at least a couple of photos that you had no idea you were going to capture. And that's it for this video. The reasons I love macro photography. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe for more macro photography videos and see you soon again. Bye bye. Today I'm going to a nature reserve, Sandemar, uh, in Stockholm area where I live. Happy to finally be here. <laughs> I already love this place. <laughs> I know I probably shouldn't be, but I don't know, it feels scary to walk that close to these big animals. So that was another species that I have never photographed before. 